So we're given functions g and h, and f is between g and h, and we want to find the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x. So in order to do this, we have to first find the limit of the endpoints. So we're going to find the limit of g of x and h of x as x approaches negative 1. So because the function is bounded by g and h, so will the limit. Okay, so I don't know what the limit of f of x is, but I do know for h of x, h of x is given by this function. I can plug in negative 1 to get negative 1 squared minus negative 1 plus 1 over negative 1. For g of x, I'm given it's cosine pi x plus 2. I'm going to plug in negative 1. I get cosine of negative pi plus 2. So cosine of negative pi is the same thing as cosine of pi, which is negative 1. And then I'm going to add 2 to that, so that will be 1. I still have my limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x. And now on the right side I have to simplify. I have two negatives, I'll make it a positive. Negative 1 squared plus 1 is 2. And then 1 over negative 1 is negative 1, so 2 minus 1 is 1. And so we see that the limit of f of x is between 1 and 1. Therefore, by the squeeze theorem, the limit has to be 1. Okay, let's go on to the next problem. So f is a continuous function on the open interval 3 comma 9. We're given f of 4 is negative 2 f of 6 is 2 and f of 8 is negative 2. Okay. So which of the following must be true? f has at least two zeros. Well, let's see. Because the function is continuous in the open interval, I cannot lift up my pen when I draw this. So I don't know what it looks like, but I need to co uh, connect point A with point B and then point B to point C. That's what it means to be continuous. So if I connect it, I don't, I don't really care how I connect it, but at some point, I'm gonna have to cross the x-axis over here, and then at some point, I'm gonna have to cross the x-axis over here. So yeah, by the intermediate value theorem, there are two zeros, so this is correct. The second one, the graph of f has at least one horizontal tangent. Okay, so this is a fancy way of saying that the derivative is zero. Okay, another way to think about this is Rolle's theorem. Rolle's theorem says if a and b, the closed interval is continuous, and the open interval is differentiable, then the derivative is zero at some point C, where C is between A and B. Clearly, we're not given any condition about being differentiable. We do not know this. So we cannot assume that the derivative is gonna be zero. So to come into even more, what if it was something like this, where there was a sharp corner, let's say point A, I'm sorry, point B. This is not a horizontal tangent. The derivative at this point does not exist. And the reason it doesn't exist is because the left-hand derivative is positive and the right-hand derivative is negative. And those two are not the same. Okay, so I just found a counterexample to number two, so therefore this cannot be true, necessarily. And then three, for some c in the interval six to eight, f of c is one. If we go back to this graph, we know that we have to connect the, the dots here from b to c, 
and the intervals between negative 2 and 2. So by the intermediate value theorem, we're going to have to cross the y, at the y value of 1 at some point in order to get down to c. So number 3 is correct. So looking at the answer choices, this is the correct one.